Kevin Blanche, we got giant breaking fucking news. I got to shoot this off the hoop real quick. The uranium enrichment plant where they take all our nuclear waste and they mox it, the most filthy, dirtiest, horrible freaking thing in the world in Kentucky has been hit by a tornado. Now, they're going to come out with their standard lie. Oh, nothing. Do you know what kind of fuel is sitting in there? The, the worst of the worst. This is about as bad as it can get. You know, and all you prone, what is it going to take? I mean, really, what is it going to take for all you fuckers to wake the fuck up and realize how dangerous? 40 years of spent fuel sitting around on these things. You know, we have 104 nuclear waste just sitting on site. Tornadoes, earthquakes, you know, dodging bullets and, oh no, Fukushima. And you know, how many days ago did I say? Yeah, they're going with my gut feeling and my intuitive sense. I said, we're going to get one here. We just got one. Now, the standard lie, we got people in Kentucky, and you people that are in Kentucky, come on. Come on, we need you right now. We need you right now. Dig in, dig in. Make phone calls. Find out what's the truth. Of, because they're going to come out with the standard lie. Oh, nothing, nothing standard. You know what kind of filth sits in? You know how much waste is stored there? Moxied waste. This is the freaking nightmare. This is what Megan Rice went to jail for prison for, trying to call attention to you morons. These are giant catastrophes. Oh, you know, terrorist threats, terrorist threats. I mean, natural disaster threats. What? I mean, we have dodged bullets and dodged bullets and dodged bullets. We got 104 of these, but this is the granddaddy of them all. This is the, you know, everybody says, oh, nuclear fuel is clean, huh? All you fuckers are seeing nuclear waste frame? Think about this. That just happened, you dumb fuckers. What the fuck is it going to take? This is a giant developing story. We are the media. Don't. Don't let the fucking mainstream media develop this story. We are the media. We develop this story right now in the truth. In the truth. We tell the truth, just like I told the truth about Fukushima. You guys in Kentucky and Tennessee, get on the phone. Get digging around. Dig in on this story. Get over there with your cameras. Whatever you can do, you know. I mean, get over there. Get, I mean, dig in. We need to develop. This is a major, gigantic, developing story right now. Gigantic. You know, and they're going to lie their ass off just like they did Fukushima. You know, and all you pro nukers have been writing in print. Oh boy, oh boy. You know, keep going, keep going. Keep freaking downplaying these stories. This is a gi gigantic, gigantic developing story. Wow. Stay on tune it. The nuclear power plant does not stand alone, it is underlaid by a massive industrial infrastructure. You have to mine millions of tons of uranium fossil fuel. You just watch those trucks. They're as big as this, as this church, a truck. And then you've got to mill it, crush it into little fine particles, that more fossil fuel. And then the uranium is enriched in America and at Paducah. They use two 1,500 megawatt coal-fired plants to enrich the uranium. Oh, but it doesn't produce any CO2, right? Well, people should be sued. I mean, there must be a law that people can't lie. This is so important. And it's a medical problem. And we sit back, you know, waiting in our, waiting, in our consulting rooms for the patients to present with their lumps and their indigestion or their hematemesis or their hemoptysis or their pneumothorax, and it's too late. And we don't get out and say, okay, I want to educate you about medicine. I mean, there are lots of things we could do, like why you shouldn't hand your antibiotics over the fence to Mrs. Brown, because a year ago you had the same symptoms as Mrs. Brown, and why don't you have the rest of my antibiotics? I mean, people, people don't know anything about viruses and bacteria, and that's because we haven't taught them. But we must teach them about this too. The other thing is that, the, that at the enrichment plant at Paducah, Kentucky, the uranium is converted to a gas called uranium hexafluoride, which is very corrosive and very hot. And there are hundreds of miles of pipes containing this gas that is filtered through a cascade of filters. On one side stays uranium-235, which is the one that is the fissionable one, and the other side, actually, it's the reverse says U238, which is non-fissionable, and this is 235. 235 is present in 0.7% in natural uranium and must be enriched to 3% for use in reactors, over 50%, and you've got bomb-grade material, and the bomb dropped on Hiroshima was a uranium bomb. But because there are hundreds of miles of these pipes that are very hot, beside them are other pipes containing CFC gas. Now, you know 
um, that the Montreal Protocol bans CFC gas because it destroys the ozone. And in Australia, one in nine people now get malignant melanoma because the sun is so intensely toxic. And, you know, old people are just absolutely covered in SCCs and BCCs. I mean, you sit in a dermatology clinic, it's unbelievable. That's from the sun. And we are very racist in Australia. The Aborigines have the highest infant mortality in the world, dreadful conditions, we stole their land. But we like to lie in the sun and turn brown um, in the summer um, and, and, you know, get a lot of melanin in our skins like the Aborigines. Anyway... So this CFC it circulates through hundreds of miles of pipes and 93% of the CFC 114 gas, which is a commonest here, um, is released in America from the uranium enrichment plant and it's 10 to 20,000 times uh, more potent as a global warmer than CO2. Fancy that. How did I find that out? Oh, well, I called the EPA and I found this really nice woman called Nancy something and she sent me all the data. And there are many other actual global warming gases used in the production of uranium for nuclear power. So I can't tell you the sense of indignation I have that people are lying about this, particularly the nuclear industry, saying they're the answer to global warming. And I would like all of you to take this into your hearts and souls too and your bones and get out there and teach your friends. And if they don't listen, hit them on the head.
The nuclear power plant does not stand alone. It is underlaid by a massive industrial infrastructure. You have to mine millions of tonnes of uranium fossil fuel. You just watch those trucks. They're as big as this, as this church, a truck. And then you've got to mill it, crush it into little fine particles, that more fossil fuel. And then the uranium is enriched in America and at Paducah. They use two 1,500 megawatt coal-fired plants to enrich the uranium. Oh, but it doesn't produce any CO2, right? Well, people should be sued. I mean, there must be a law that people can't lie. This is so important, and it's a medical problem. And we sit back, you know, waiting in our, waiting, in our consulting rooms for the patients to present with their lumps and their indigestion, or their hematemesis, or their hemoptysis, or their pneumothorax, and it's too late. And we don't get out and say, okay, I want to educate you about medicine. I mean, there are lots of things we could do, like why you shouldn't hand your antibiotics over the fence to Mrs. Brown, because a year ago you had the same symptoms as Mrs. Brown, and why don't you have the rest of my antibiotics? I mean, people, people don't know anything about viruses and bacteria, and that's because we haven't taught them. But we must teach them about this too. The other thing is that, the, that at the enrichment plant of Paducah, Kentucky, the uranium is converted to a gas called uranium hexafluoride, which is very corrosive and very hot. And there are hundreds of miles of pipes containing this gas that is filtered through a cascade of filters. On one side stays uranium-235, which is the one that is the fissionable one, and the other side Actually, it's the reverse. Say U238, which is non-fissionable, and this is 235. 235 is present in 0.7% in natural uranium and must be enriched to 3% for use in reactors, over 50%, and you've got bomb-grade material, and the bomb dropped on Hiroshima was a uranium bomb. But because there are hundreds of miles of these pipes that are very hot, beside them are other pipes containing CFC gas. Now, you know um, that the Montreal Protocol banned CFC gas because it destroys the ozone. And in Australia, one in nine people now get malignant melanoma because the sun is so intensely toxic. And, you know, old people are just absolutely covered in SCCs and BCCs. I mean, you sit in a dermatology clinic, it's unbelievable. That's from the sun. And we are very racist in Australia. The Aborigines have the highest infant mortality in the world, dreadful conditions, we stole their land, but we like to lie in the sun and turn brown um, in the summer um, and, and, you know, get a lot of melanin in our skins like the Aborigines. Anyway, so this CFC is, circulates through hundreds of miles of pipes and 93% of the CFC 114 gas, which is a commonest here, um, is released in America from the uranium enrichment plant and it's 10 to 20,000 times uh, more potent as a global warmer than CO2. Fancy that. How did I find that out? Oh, well, I called the EPA and I found this really nice woman called Nancy something and she sent me all the data. And there are many other actual global warming gases used in the production of uranium for nuclear power. So I can't tell you the sense of indignation I have that people are lying about this, particularly the nuclear industry, saying they're the answer to global warming. And I would like all of you to take this into your hearts and souls too, and your bones, and get out there and teach your friends. And if they don't listen, hit them on the head.